here we are again. And surprise, surprise, this one's actually holiday edition of the stakeout. Um, Nonprofits are kind of one of my big jams that I'm privileged to work with. Um, and especially this one, very near and dear and special because this isn't just like someone I work with. This is a friend of a long time now. His stoke could be more than mine <laughs> at points, <laughs> if you can believe that. Um, but I've got this amazing man with me here on the stakeout today. Uh, I'm going to let him introduce himself and... Uh, and then just kind of give me, you know, job title and that, and then we'll kind of go from there. Yeah. Uh, hey, everybody. Seth Ehrlich from SOS Outreach and executive director over there. I have been with the organization now 18 years, and it is an incredible effort uh, that actually celebrates its 30th year as an organization tomorrow. So our birthday, our official birthday is tomorrow of the founding. And what we do is work with kids through the power of skiing and riding and being on the mountains and trails uh, to build strong relationships between adults and kids and then integrate service learning and leadership development. And we do that across 15 locations, 3,000 kids. Steamboat is one of our core sites and it is an awesome program that we have. And to, 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 to the intro there, yes, I am the chairman of Stoke is also the core part of my job. Yes, <laughs> and you learned it here on the stick. <laughs> um, so with that, um, how did SOS get started? Yeah, so 30 years ago. 30 years ago, the timing. tomorrow, That's there was a meeting in Vail. And uh, I mean, it was, it was back in the days when snowboarding was new, questionable on resorts. There were a lot of resorts who were talking about it not being welcome anymore. And Vail was one of those in conversation as to whether or not snowboarding would continue. And so a group of snowboarders, and it started out of the snowboard school, um, got together to put a positive spin on snowboarding. And so originally they put on competitions. Actually, the first half pipe competition on Vail Mountain was an SOS outreach event and raised the money from registration and then donated it into community organizations. Perfect. Two years into doing that said, there is a much larger opportunity yep. here. We like can, we can do yes, something with this. Raising money is awesome. However, the power of the sport is so real. Yep. And so it started in 95, 96 with kids coming out of Metro Denver. And we had uh, less than 40 kids that first year for a one day program. And it just kept growing from there. Yep. Um, snowboarding and then added skiing and then added year two and year three. And now we work with kids from fourth grade through high school graduation and beyond. And again, anchored everything through the power of the outdoors yep. to build strong relationships and create change. It's amazing. Yep. Um, I've had the privilege of actually meeting some of the kids, riding some of the kids, yep. meeting and hanging out with the kids that are now adults that have gone <laughs> through the program and are now like doing their part of giving back. To me, that's always been one of my favorites is those that were in the program that, that come back to be a mentor. Yeah. It is hands down one of the coolest things. I even talked to other like nonprofits about that. I'm like, do you know about SOS? Because you should see, because I see it in other nonprofits, but not as much as I see with you guys. It's wild. This is, uh, as I joke, but am, and I'm completely serious about that. Like, the, it's like having a Navy SEAL team. Like these kids are unreal. <laughs> And we are now, we started this alumni program three years ago, led by an alumni member. So program graduate, we said, let's figure out how we can engage graduates after the program. And now we have over 50 kids who are involved as volunteers, mentors, or paid staff with the organization. Two of them are board members. I mean, it is now catching fire and we're providing passes to them and they are fully engaged in this full circle movement. But again, it goes to the ability to be a part of a community larger than yourself. Yep. And it's a really cool thing that you get to do when you share a passion with someone. It's awesome. Um, Privileged to go yeah. to Silverton last year. And it hit home even more yep. just because, it, you know, we're hanging out and we're getting ready to go ride again and all that kind of stuff and having a super fun time. And they're like, oh, well, you know, and there was this like sort of, not meek, but meekness to like some of the questions asked. And I'm like, 
this is all about you guys. Yeah. We're just able to come and have fun with you. You're the awesome people. And they like looked at me and I was like, what you're doing and where you've come from and where you are now and possibly then where you're going down the road is so cool to be a part of. Yeah. And so, you know, privileged to be able to like do something like that and be with group. not to mention it dumped the entire time. Um, <laughs> next question. <laughs> um, oh, I did want to um, talk about, so being from where it started uh -huh. 30 years ago, how many states now? Uh, 10 states, Kay. 15 communities, 24 mountain resorts. And so as far east as Detroit and as far west as Seattle. Oh, it's amazing. That is like the coolest. Yeah. Because um, it's funny, for a long time, I was like, are they ever going to grow? And then all of a sudden, I start getting the stuff that you guys send me. And I was like, oh, we're here, 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 here. Yeah. And 24 mountains. I mean, like, yeah. which again, the same thing. The mount the ski mountains being able to provide help back, you know, what you guys are doing is huge. Yeah. Um, how can people get involved with the program? It's everything. Uh, I mean, really, the most look us up sosoutreach.org, SOS Outreach on social handles. And first off, sign up for our newsletter, get involved, get updated as to what's happening. If you are in proximity to one of our 15 locations, you can come out, join for a ride day, um, come out, and you can intern, uh, host in one of our kids for an internship site. You can be a volunteer, you can be a mentor. There's all kinds of different ways you can get involved on the program side. Jackets, pants, goggles, gloves, hats. We provide that for all 3,000 kids so that there is no barrier for them to be able to participate on the hill. So if you have lightly used gear, any of those 15 locations need it so that we can keep this flow going with kids because not being able to have a kid in our program due to not having gear sucks. And then finally, cash contributions. Uh, whether through your workplace, hosting an event that uh, brings together a community that we do a raffle for or a direct contribution. I love it. So really any, what has been the key for this, we are a community. SOS Outreach is a community and if you just lean in and be a part of our community, it's how you can get involved and how you can really impact the mission and all of our kids benefit from that. I love it. I love it. Um, I mean, it's crazy because like the meetings we have and you know, it's like, okay, we're spitballing for next year. <laughs> and then all of a sudden it was like, well, Evo's doing a wax party. Yeah. And we were like, well, we can do a wax That's party. Exactly it. And now we've had two of them. Yeah. The coolest thing about a second annual is there's going to be a third. Yeah. So stay tuned, check it out next winter, beginning of the season in steamboat, third annual wax party. All the money that we take in from donations and that, we wax your skis or board, scrape them for you. No, we do not do edges. Don't even ask. We donate to SOS Outreach. An incredible, super fun time. Local beverage place um, hosts us, the bus stop, Storm Peak Brewing. It's incredible. It's, and it's, it's sparked other things. Like yeah. when, what else can we pull together to do a fun fundraiser for people, a give back? Not to mention the fact that beginning of the season, all of a sudden you're like, oh, mountain's opening. Oh, did I even put on storage wax? <laughs> no. Oh, did I wax at the end of the season? No. We got you covered. And then it goes to the most incredible cause, especially being the youth. Um, super excited to keep that rolling. Um, well, you actually already answered the next question which was how we follow you on social media because you're just you're like this um so i guess we get to get into the fun stuff i love fun stuff um and mind you some people have rolled in and been like well what are the questions and i'm like i'm not telling you the questions ahead of time this is the stakeout you got to be prepared so far he seems pretty prepared right um favorite costume your go-to Oh, I, I, I got a, I got, so Halloween is massive at my house. We, yes. we have, uh, we, we were between 800 and a thousand trick or treaters every year. <laughs> it's the advantage of being in the, uh, uh, small neighborhood with short driveways. Yep. So the candy to steps ratio. Yes. Really good. Yep. Uh, so we do a whole graveyard theme and I have this steampunk that I just, it's awesome. I love it. Nice. Yeah. Perfect. Steampunk. I, I rock the whole like graveyard attendant. Oh, that's so and perfect. I do take a little bit of joy in scaring kids. Um, along those lines, no lie, because 
I'm a carny, if you didn't already know this, um, haunted house on amusement uh -huh. piers. So we were able to take some of that stuff sometimes and decorate our house. So my dad would always do that. Huge old dead tree with the faces in it and everything. <laughs> he sat dressed up as a scarecrow yep. in a chair, old school, like fold up chair. And you'd look and, and like, looked like a stuffed stair scarecrow. Just happened to be with my homie stopping by to drop off candy and then go back out again. And we're looking out the sliding glass window and I was like, Oh, oh, wait, 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 hold on, hold on. And this woman walks up with her child. And my dad moves. She technically left her kid. She ran so fast down the street that her kid was running as fast as he could and was not catching up. She just bailed on him and took off. She got so scared. So it. that, you, you're yep. doing that. Is We'd be so good. awesome. Yeah, we're in. Our, oh, our, our the best. daughter dresses in black at the end, hides in the graveyard in our front yard and jumps out. Jumps out yeah, it's perfect. It's Halloween. Yeah. It's the same things you're supposed to do. Um, this one's one that I just kind of came up with for fun, just to see what people's likes are. There are things that are their jams. Um, you're stranded on an island. Mm -hmm. You get one more food, one type of food, like a favorite, and a drink. What would your last sort of meal be? Oh, and it's not something that might sustain your life on the island or oh, anything good. like I'm that. I'm not eating it this is... every day for the rest of my life. But you never know. My favorites, I would. Oh, wow. Oh. Mm hmm. It'd be the drink would be coffee. Okay. I just love the smell, yep. the whole experience. Mm hmm. It'd be a steak. Ooh, steak and coffee. I just, I just love, yeah. I've never done that combination. Now I got to do now it. Now you're gonna have to try yeah, it. See how it goes. I don't know. I, I wasn't <laughs> ready for that one, but yeah, I do steak and coffee. I'm That's a, what I do. I'm a, like a sushi ice cream kind of guy. Mm -hmm. And then I'd probably finish with like uh, some bourbon. Yeah, that's a good call. Mm -hmm. Yep. I love it. Um, remember, this is why you tune into the stakeout because you get to meet amazing people like this <laughs> that do amazing things. That smile is literally on his. He sleeps. Smile. I, I swear to you. <laughs> um, Seth, as always, a pleasure, senor. Thank Love you, you brother. Um, Love you thanks for coming on the stakeout. Thank you guys for tuning in. See you next time.